Howdy partner, it's Mark from This Cruise Life, and I just spent a week on board Carnival's newest flagship, the Carnival Jubilee, sailing out of Galveston, Texas. And I'm excited to tell you what I loved, what I didn't love, and a couple things that I hated. But don't just take my word for it, I also pulled the Facebook group to find out what they enjoyed about this beautiful flagship. So let's head on back to the ranch and jump in. Carnival Jubilee is the third Excel class ship for Carnival Cruise Lines, and it has a passenger capacity of over 6,000. It's a big ship. Now, we've had the opportunity to sail on Sisters Mardi Gras and Carnival Celebration, along with a ship in every operating class of Carnival's fleet, so I feel very comfortable sharing my full thoughts and review on this ship with you and comparing it against how the other ships in the fleet perform. With that said, if I miss something or you have a question about something I don't cover, drop that in the comments below. We've taken a lot of pictures and a lot of videos and I'm pretty sure I'm going to have the answer for you. And as a rule, we reply to every comment down there, so please drop those in. And if you're new to the channel, hi, welcome. Uh, click that subscribe button, it's free to do, it helps us continue to grow, and we can't wait to bring you additional cruise content in the new year. Okay, y'all. Let's jump into what I love about Carnival Jubilee. And the list starts before I even got onto the ship. Galveston has invested over $50 million into the terminal building and it shows. Passenger flow was super smooth. The, the one tweak that I think uh, I would make would be making the priority line a little bit bigger. Uh, as I mentioned in the first 24 hour video, that queue backed down the entire side of the terminal building because there's only one line for priority passengers in the terminal. Overall, tons of space, still has that fresh paint smell. Now, let's jump on to the actual Carnival Jubilee and talk about what I love about the ship. In true This Cruise Life fashion, we're going to talk about the food, the drinks, the entertainment, and then general things about the ship that we loved. So, let's get hungry and talk about the food. I love that Carnival Jubilee has all of my Carnival favorites. I got my breakfast burrito at Blue Iguana. My brother Paul got his ringer from Guy's Burger. They've got the pizzeria that we've come to know and love. But guess what? The Carnival Jubilee, the pizza is even better. Uh, we did a video about the new pizza varieties that they introduced on the Carnival Jubilee and I absolutely love the Coastal Slice. And the next door neighbor, Beach Buns, I love that just as much, if not maybe even a little bit more. We did a, a bunch of videos on that as well. Again, we'll just put in the playlist this whole video to talk about that, but Beach Buns had so much to love. It's the deli on board, but they also introduced sausages, soups of the day, tomato soup. It was just an awesome new venue. I love that Carnival Cruise Line continues to roll out newness to the ships that they roll out. On Carnival Celebration, they also had two new pizza varieties and they had a new sandwich shop and they kept that true with Carnival Jubilee. It just keeps the ships fresh and new and I'm excited to come back to it to check it out again. Carnival Jubilee also has other favorites like the Bonsai Sisters, Bonsai Sushi, Bonsai Tapanyaki, Cucina del Capitano, and it keeps several of the restaurants that were introduced on Mardi Gras. My favorite restaurant on board a Carnival cruise ship three years running is Chebang. We've done a bunch of videos about Chebang, uh, the, the Tex-Mex slash Asian. They kind of come together as a fusion. It's just two separate menus, but it's delicious. We ate there for lunch and we ate there for dinner multiple times through our sailing. Highly, highly recommend Chebang. With that said, I will say Street Eats up on Lido does give Chebang a run for its money for those quick bites that you want to eat. It's kind of like food truck style. You go up and you grab some fries or a bao bun or some, some steak skewers. Delicious little bites that you can get during the day. And don't forget about Shaq's Big Chicken, another delicious offering on board the Excel class of ships for Carnival Cruise Line. There is just so much to love about the food on board Carnival Jubilee, and they've made it even better with the introduction of beach buns and coastal slice and the new theming and options that are on the menus. So, in summary, I loved the food on board Carnival Jubilee. 
And I didn't even mention the main dining room. We don't often eat at the main dining room on this class of ship because of all of the other venues, Java Blue, because of all of the other food venues that are on board this ship. But for the purposes of this review, we did eat there several times this week so that we could tell you about the experience. The food was your traditional carnival fare in the main dining room. It was delicious. It was a little bit slow because it was an inaugural sailing and the crew was still figuring everything out, but we enjoyed everything that we had in the main dining room. In fact, we even did a video about the main dining room. We enjoyed it that much. Finally, if you're still hungry with that Texas-sized appetite, not to worry, Guy's Pig and Anchor Smokehouse Brew House does late night snacks from 11.30 p.m. to 1 a.m. where you can pick up deep dish pizzas. You can pick up more hot dogs if you haven't had enough from beach buns. You can pick up uh, dips and, and coleslaws and all sorts of food up on deck eight at the aft of the ship. I give the food a solid five ships out of five ships on board Carnival Jubilee. And believe it or not, I haven't even mentioned all of the venues on board. I am certain you are going to find something that you will love. Now, let's talk about the drinks on board Carnival Jubilee. Once again, Carnival has all of your favorites that you know and love, from Pig and Anchor to Alchemy, Java Blue, uh, the, the Tides Bar, uh, Serenity Bar, all of those Carnival favorites, but they've introduced several new bars in the new zones, and I am absolutely in love. Inks PhD or Dr. Inks drinks is probably the most popular or most reported on one because it is absolutely gorgeous. It's got that octopus that lives under the sea and you've got those LED screens. It is an absolutely beautiful space. And I had the chance to try multiple of the drinks at the new bar and, and I enjoyed them. I enjoyed that space a lot. They had live music, the, the, the strings trio was there. It was a lovely space. Uh, Marina Bar. Is, is one of my favorite. I think it's the prettiest of the new spaces. Uh, it is just gorgeous. We actually didn't spend any time in the Marina Bar because we were at our other favorite, the Golden Mermaid. In fact, I think the Golden Mermaid was my personal favorite of the new bars introduced because I enjoyed the drinks the most at that bar. I had a drink that had actual edible gold flakes in it. Goldschlager does not count, y'all. Um, it was just a beautiful space. The design was gorgeous. The bartenders were super kind, um, and it was a great place to enjoy a cocktail and listen to some live music. I, of course, enjoyed my iced caramel macchiato extra caramel from Anna Maria at Java Blue. Y'all know that I love that venue to get my caffeine. I also loved that they added little coffee bars or coffee spots throughout the ship included so to spread out the crowds in the morning. So there was a little coffee station at Dr. Inks. I thought that was a really nice touch on board. Finally, I love that you can bring on board your 12 packs of soda with you uh, and the new refrigerators on board. You can tell they're new because they kept everything ice cold. Remember, cruise tip, you can bring on one 12 pack of soda and one bottle of wine or champagne per adult passenger uh, that is staying in your stateroom. And of course, entertainment. I love how there is always something happening around the ship on board Carnival Jubilee. Whether you're attending Playlist Productions' brand new show, Dear Future Husband, you're attending a center stage show, you're seeing the magician, Minaj. Okay, just imagine the name of the person, okay? Right. Okay, if you see that person again when you go back home, and you're going to say this, I saw a magician, you can say the cute magician on board, <laughs> Carnival Jubilee, okay? His name is Man OJ, the man with the orange juice, because I'm sweet, thank you. And he said, like, he asked me to think of a name of the person, I thought of you. And I asked you to think of the name of the person and repeat the name again and again in your mind. And the magician said exactly the name, Rocky. <laughs> Thank you so much. The magician on board Carnival Jubilee is awesome. Highly recommend it. They've got soloists. They've got the, the strings trio. They've got bands. They've got live music. There is just... There's something happening all of the time. And, and don't forget, you've got the punchliner comedians. You've got, oh my gosh, the trivias. The first ever Carnival Jubilee ship on a stick. Uh, congratulations to, to my brother who won it. I did win one later in the week, um, but, but awesome, so much fun. 
Oh, and the interactive screens in the currents. You can actually choose what you want to see on those screens. I thought that was such a cool ad. And I didn't even mention the game show. So you've got Deal or No Deal. You've got Family Feud Live. I, I could go on and on. I in fact, I'm going to. The Ropes Course, the new features in the Ropes Course. You've got Bolt Ultimate Sea Coaster. You've got Mini Golf. You've got that entire, the water park. You've got there is so much to do on board Carnival Jubilee. When I tell you, if you're bored, it's on you. I truly believe it because this ship has it all. It truly is a flagship in the Carnival fleet. We were not bored even once the entire week on board Carnival Jubilee. In fact, I got some of the best sleep on board, I think because I was exhausted from trying to do it all. Oh, and, and we had some ports too. I probably should mention that. Uh, Roatan, Cozumel, Costamaya. But many people that I talked to actually stayed on board during the ports because there was so much to do that they didn't want to miss it. And so they actually stuck around on the ship. We got off in every port and we took lots of pictures of the beautiful Carnival Jubilee. And we were excited to be part of the inaugural visits of Carnival Jubilee to those ports of call. That's a lot to love on board Carnival Jubilee. I'm going to wind this down with the miscellaneous things that I loved, starting with the design of the ship. I absolutely, if you haven't picked up on it already, I absolutely loved the currents. I loved the shores. I think the design and the features in those areas are absolutely beautiful, but there are other touches throughout the ship that truly make this just a beautifully designed ship. You've got the center stage bar area. You've got, here's my favorite space on board Carnival Jubilee. If when you are there, here's my ask, take a selfie, take us online. I want to see you in this space. It is just an absolutely gorgeous space on board Carnival Jubilee. I also love the layout of the ship. If you've sailed Mardi Gras or if you sailed Carnival Celebration, it's going to feel very familiar. I love the zones. The zones do a great job spreading folks out across the ship so it never feels crowded. Now, there are a couple of times where it might feel crowded when the theater ends and everyone is exiting the theater or that guest services queue. Remember, we teach you how to avoid that guest services queue to get to the aft of the ship. Like there are a couple of those pinch points on board, but overall the zones do a phenomenal job spreading people out across the ship. I love the huge Serenity adults only area. There was never once a time where I wasn't able to find a chair to lay out. And it didn't matter what time of the day that I went up there. It is the largest Serenity in the entire fleet. And I love that. I mentioned how much I love the, the familiarity of the design of the ship, but what I love the most is how each of the three sisters have their own personality from new bars, new venues, new designs. It just really keeps the cruise experience fresh and I know there might be some recency bias creeping in here, but I think Carnival Jubilee might be my favorite of the design spaces. So it is just a beautiful ship. A couple last quick call outs. I loved the Embark Debark in all of the ports of call, walked off the ship, walked right back on the ship. Again, depending on when you get there, your experience may vary, but it was super smooth for me. And of course I love the Relax Debark at the end of the cruise. Book a little bit later of a flight, grab your food, head on up to Serenity, relax, let those crowds die down before you get off this beautiful ship. Two last things that I absolutely loved about my experience on Carnival Jubilee, the merchandise. There's so much cool stuff that you can get in this inaugural season. And there were a couple of surprises for us on the inaugural sailing. This Carnival Jubilee inaugural cowboy hat, a, a nod to Texas, and this absolutely beautiful Carnival Jubilee inaugural season book that was waiting for us in the stateroom when we boarded. Just such a cool touch. And last but certainly not least, the crew on board. We saw so many familiar faces that, that we know and that we love from previous cruises. I shouted them out in the first 24 hours and we continued to see crew members that we knew throughout the rest of the week, which was an awesome experience. The Carnival Jubilee crew is doing an amazing job. Now I'm going to jump into a couple of loves from the Facebook group. So I'm going to make sure that I call out a couple things they mentioned. The shows specifically were called out multiple times. Dear Future Husband, um, the Center Stage shows. Dr. Enks was called out many, many times in the Facebook group as one of their favorite items that was on the new ship. The Chef's Table experience was called out several times as well. If you've not done a Chef's Table experience, I can't suggest it enough. It is such an amazing experience on board a Carnival cruise ship. Uh, the Ropes course was called out multiple times. The updated or the additions to the Ropes course was called out, which I love that. 
and the food rated quite highly across most of the commenters. With that said, there were some things that people commented that they didn't love about the ship. And I'm going to jump into that section now about what I didn't love about Carnival Jubilee. One of the things I didn't love about Carnival Jubilee, and this is true with her sisters as well, is that there are no forward-facing decks. You can't go out to the front of the ship and just watch it sailing in the water. You can't watch the stars at night from the forward-facing decks unless you have a Havana Cabana cabin that actually allows you to go out to the very front of the deck on deck eight. There are no forward-facing decks. Sure, you can go up to Serenity at the very top of the ship, and it has those giant glass partitions. That's a miss for me. I really miss having those forward spaces on a Carnival cruise ship. I also didn't love that the wait times reflected in the app weren't actual reality for what the wait times were. Now, I do chalk this up to an inaugural cruise. The kitchens were backed up. The dining rooms were backed up. And so it took longer to get a table. Um, didn't love that. Again, we still did not go hungry. Similar to her sisters, I didn't love the theater. It's big. But with the size of the ship, there's still not enough space for people that want to see the shows. There were a couple of shows that Paul and I went to, and he was like, uh, I'm just going to bounce. And I found a single seat that was available somewhere in the theater. It's a big theater. It's just not big enough for the demand that that ship draws to the shows. I was also disappointed that some of the venues closed early on a couple of occasions. Uh, street Eats, Fresh Creations... Be sure to stock your fun times to make sure you know when things are going to be open and go a little bit early just so you don't miss out. The Texas tailgate, which there's been a lot of talk about that, I didn't love that. It was so cold outside for the first quarter and second quarter. They canceled the third quarter. They moved the fourth quarter inside, but no one really followed and it just kind of fizzled out and so the whole thing was canceled. I didn't love that. I don't know who or why they thought to put that on the very last day sailing back to Galveston when they knew it was going to be cold, putting a party up on deck. Just, the, I'm certain there will be tweaks and adjustments made to the Texas tailgate because it just didn't make sense on the inaugural sailing. But drop in the comments, let me know how it is on your sailing. One of the other things that I didn't love about the Carnival Jubilee, and it's same across the sisters, is the tiny spa space down on deck five. I'm used to the Cloud9 spaces up top on the ship that have the ocean views and all of the different spaces to, to lay out and to lounge. This spa is in the interior of the ship, no windows, and for the number of passengers, it is a small spa. Keep that in mind when you're thinking about a spa stateroom or booking a, a thermal suite pass. Um, it's a small spa and it is always busy. And the final thing that I didn't love about Carnival Jubilee, and it's a small one, it's a net, but it was the placement of the toppings bar for beach buns. It was so bizarre to me. You go into line, and there was, there was usually a line. It didn't take long, five, ten minutes, but you go through the line, you order your things, and then the toppings bar was at the start of the line. The silverware for the soup was at the start of the line. The, the ketchup, the mustard, all of your toppings were at the start of the line. So you'd come back with your beach buns, and you'd have to cut through that line every time. Now, I get they had to put it there based on the design of the sisters and the fleet, but it was just a, a weird layout. I didn't love that. Again, a small knit. People were always kind and always let me cut through to get my ketchup. <laughs> I'm going to end this with a couple of things that I hated about the Carnival Jubilee. It was an inaugural sailing and we were the first people sleeping in our stateroom. And so Carnival doesn't discover these things ahead of time, but there was a loose pipe or a loose something in the wall next to our stateroom, and it slammed against the wall um, all night long that first night. The first night, we didn't get a great night of sleep. Um, the second night, we actually went down to guest services because it, it was getting worse, and guest services came up to the room, listened, heard it. They called the floor supervisor. Floor supervisor called maintenance. There were a lot of people in that little interior stateroom listening to the banging on the wall. Um, guest services asked uh, the floor supervisor. Uh, she said, you know, can you fix it? And he looked at her, and this was my favorite thing. He looked at her. He's like, it's in an enclosed wall. No, we can't fix it. Um, and so they did right, and they moved us to another room, a, a deck below us. They allowed us to sleep in that other room that night so we didn't have to pack up all of our stuff in the middle of the night and bring it down, which was so appreciated. The next morning, we moved all of our stuff down, 
And then here's where Carnival goes above and beyond. Because of that inconvenience, they bought us a round of drinks and they bought us a round of steakhouse selections in the main dining room one night. I, they didn't need to do that. It was super kind of them. We knew that it was an inaugural and sometimes things are not perfect and you discover things. And so that was something that we hated, but we loved how Carnival absolutely made it right. Truly a shout out to Manassi Onboard Carnival Jubilee XS Services. You turned what could have been a bad situation into one where I am telling you that I loved how it played out on board that inaugural sailing. So thank you. The final thing that I hated on board Carnival Jubilee was the internet stability. The internet was blazing fast. Starlink is a beautiful thing. However, I got disconnected. If you move from the bedroom to the hallway, you got disconnected from the internet. If you moved from beach buns to sitting down, you got disconnected from the internet. I got disconnected from the internet dozens of times a day. Again, not a big deal, just annoying or a nuisance where I would be looking to say, oh, wh where are we going? Oh, shoot, I'm not on the, I'm not on the Wi-Fi. Um, again, when you were on the Wi-Fi blazing, I uploaded many videos for Rocky. Uh, we, we sent videos back and forth. We edited them. We posted them to YouTube. Like there were no issues with the speed. The issue was the reliability on staying connected. That's what we loved, what we didn't love, and what we hated about our time on Carnival Jubilee. It was an amazing inaugural sailing. I loved being part of another ribbon cutting for Carnival Cruise Line. I loved getting to see uh, Christine Duffy, the, the president of Carnival Cruise Line. Again, we sailed with her on Venezia. I loved so much about this ship, the design, the food, the new bars, the new spaces. Uh, the ports are great, of course. The ship is absolutely wonderful. Yes, there were some things that I didn't love. And that's true with any cruise. And there were a couple of things that I hated. Being an inaugural cruise, of course, they are still learning, they're still adjusting, and they're figuring it out. The one thing that I always encourage cruisers to think about when booking a cruise that is the inaugural or early on in its run is go in with a bit more patience. There are going to still be crew members that are learning the ropes. In fact, oh my gosh, Rebecca, thank you so much. Rebecca came up to us and said, do you have a YouTube channel? And I said, well, yes, we do. She's like, well, I work for Carnival and your videos helped me understand the Excel class onboard Carnival Cruise Lines. I've got goosebumps underneath this jacket, y'all. It was such, it was like such a humbling moment. Um, so shout out to you, Rebecca. Thank you for, for recognizing us and coming up to us and, and thanking us for the work that we do. Um, there's just so much goodness about the ship, but they're still learning. They're still growing. Some of the wait times might be off. Some of the things might not be fully operational the entire time. That's to be expected on an inaugural or early on in a ship's run. Keep that in mind. And if you go in with a little bit of extra patience, I promise you this is going to be a cruise you will always remember. The Carnival Jubilee is a beautiful ship and she is going to make Galveston proud. She is, she's got the Texas star on her bow and she will sail from there for a long time. And I can't wait until we get back on board Carnival Jubilee. If you've made it this far, thank you so much. Thanks for clicking that subscribe button and that like button and dropping in your comments. If there was something about the ship that I didn't talk about or you're like, hey, I want to know about this part of the ship, drop those down below. We answer all of them. And of course, ring those notification bells so that you know the next time we post a video. Until we see you on MSC Maravelia or Carnival Ferense or one of those other ships that we've got booked this next year, we'll see you soon.